Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we are going to look at question 9 parts A and B of the Math 206.5 final exam review. Question 9 is all about partial fraction decomposition of a rational expression. So in order to do that, the goal here is to make it, the answer is going to look like something that needs to be added or subtracted. So it's like undoing all of that work. To start, we need to figure out, well, what were the denominators of the two separate expressions? And to do that, we want to factor the denominator of the given expression. So we have 1 over x squared plus x. x squared plus x, those terms have a GCF of x, so we'll factor that out. And we end up with x times x plus 1. So what we know about our mystery terms is that 1 over x times x plus 1 was the result of something over one of the factors in the denominator x plus something else over the other factor of the denominator, x plus 1. What we want to do now, or what I would do now, is I would say, okay, wait, 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 this is too many fractions, let's get rid of the fractions. How can I do that? Multiply the entire equation by the least common denominator. So I can take this whole equation, and I can multiply, and I know that least common denominator will be x times x plus 1, because I just spent all that time undoing that great work that we had done for us. When I distribute the x times x plus 1, we would distribute over here. This factor, when we multiply it, would be over 1, and it will cancel with the uh, denominator of x times x plus 1, leaving behind just a 1. Over here, when I distribute to a over x, the factor of x will cancel, so a is going to end up being multiplied to x plus 1. And then when I distribute to this uh, term here, the factor of x plus 1 will cancel, and we have left b times x. Now we want to distribute where we can, so we're going to distribute the a. We're going to have a times x plus a times 1, which I'll just write as a, plus bx. Now we're ready to set up a system of equations. And the system of equations, we're going to kind of break apart this one equation into two separate equations, kind of like the, you know, what we did earlier. We took one expression and we split it up into two. Now we're going to take one equation and split it up into two different equations. What are these two equations going to be comprised of? One, we're going to group together all of the terms that contain the variable x. Now, we want one coming from the left-hand side and as many on the right-hand side as there are, but wait a minute. There is no variable on the left-hand side. It's just a one. So when there's no term of what we need, what do we use for it? Well, there is none. How do we represent none uh, algebraically usually? With a zero. So what I'm going to say is 0x is equal to ax plus bx. Now, I don't really want x as part of my system of equations because I know my other equation doesn't contain any x's. But what I can do is I can just divide everything out by x, right? All three terms contain that x, so I'm going to divide it out, leaving me with 0 equals a plus b. This is my first equation. My second equation is going to have just the constant terms, so the terms that don't have that variable x. On the left-hand side, I have a 1. On the right-hand side, I only have an a. So this is kind of nice because actually I'm, I'm done. I know that a is equal to 1. Boom. What's b, though? So we're going to substitute in 1 for a in that top equation. We're going to get 0 equals 1 plus b. Subtract 1 from both sides, and we figure out that b. I'm going to use that uh, commutative property of equality just to flip it around and say b is equal to negative 1. And we've figured out the variables. Yay! So we can write our final answer, the final decomposition. We're going to go back to this original set of two uh, terms. And we're going to write, um, instead of a, we have 1 over x. And instead of b, we have negative 1. Now, instead of putting negative 1 in the numerator, I'm just going to put it right there. Um, so that it turns into subtraction, I'm putting it in front of the fraction. And what that means is that we can either distribute that 1 to the numerator or denominator. It was originally in the numerator. And what's my denominator here? x plus 1. Gorgeous. And that would be it. That would be the partial fraction decomposition. It does say to check your results algebraically. So it's always nice to know when you have the right answer. And we can verify that this is, in fact, the answer by actually, well, in this case, it's subtraction, by actually subtracting those two terms. So if we were to subtract, we're going to check here, 1 over x minus 1 over x plus 1. Well, these are fractions, and when we have fractions, we need a common denominator. 
the least common denominator will be x times x plus 1, just the product of the two denominators. This first fraction is missing a denominator of x plus 1. So we're going to multiply x plus 1 to both the numerator and denominator. This one's missing that factor of x. And let's see, so now I have that same denominator. I have x times x plus 1. What do I have in the numerator? I don't need to distribute a 1, right? We have x plus 1 is from the first, and then the second one we have minus x. Oh, look at that. Those cancel. We have 1 over x times x plus 1. And then if I distribute x in the denominator, we end up with x squared plus x, which is what we started with. And that would be it. So that was just the check. The final answer was back up here, 1 over x minus 1 over x plus 1. In our next example, let's try this again. What's the first thing we need to do? Factor the denominator. So we end up with 3 over x times x minus 3, because we had that GCF of x again. OK, so now we're going to use the factored version. We're going to say, OK, 3 over x times x minus 3 was equal to something over x being added to something else over x minus 3. What are our mystery numerators? Well, first, let's get rid of the fractions. I don't want to deal with fractions, do you? I didn't think so. And we're going to multiply by the least common denominator, which will be that x times x minus 3. When I distribute over here, the x, minus, uh, x times x minus 3 will cancel with the x times x minus 3. We're going to have 3. Here we're going to distribute, and the x's will cancel, so we're going to have a times x minus 3. And when I distribute here, uh, the x minus 3 factors will cancel, so we're going to have b times x. Let's distribute, and we get ax minus 3a plus bx. Now we're ready to set up our two equations. That, remember that first one, we put all the terms containing x in one equation. The left-hand side is again missing a variable x, so we're going to say, well, it's missing it, so there's 0x on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we have ax plus bx. And then on the left-hand side, uh, wait, sorry, getting ahead of myself. So now I want to divide all three terms by x, and we get 0 equals a plus b. So there's our first equation. Our second equation in our system of equations will be when we take all of the uh, terms without x and put them in one equation. So we have 3 is equal to negative 3a. To get a by itself, I would divide both sides by negative 3. 3 divided by negative 3 is negative 1. So I know that a is equal to negative 1. We can go back to our first equation and say, OK, 0 equals negative 1 plus b. Add 1 to get b by itself. And we get 1 equals b. Lovely. Now we're ready to plug these into our uh, initial separated expressions. And we end up with negative 1 over x plus 1 over x minus 3. And there we have it. It does, again, request that we check our work. So let's check it out. Does negative 1 over x plus 1 over x minus 3 really equal what we started with? Well, to be able to combine these expressions, we need a least common denominator. And our least common denominator will be we need a factor of x and we need a factor of x minus 3. This one's missing that factor of x minus 3. So we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by x minus 3. And this guy is missing a factor of x. So this gives us, remember this negative here? Let's not forget that negative. It's going to be really easy to lose that. So we have negative x minus 3 plus 1x all divided by x times x minus 3. I'm going to distribute the negative, and we're going to get, I'm going to try to squish it in down here, negative x, negative negative becomes plus 3 plus x over x times x minus 3. Cleaning up the numerator, the negative x and the positive x cancel, and I know I need to distribute in the denominator. I'm going to get x squared minus 3x. Is that what we started with? Yes, it is. So I feel very confident that this is the correct partial fraction decomposition. Thank you for stopping.